If you've ever had the desire to open up your own salon, this episode is going to be for you because Tracy and I are going to give you the real deal information on how to transition into your own business right now on the Biz Talk. All right, Trace. Um, you know what? You should you should think about starting your own salon and you know maybe leaving the company. And <laughs> sweet, I've done it once. Yeah, I'll do Take, it again. Okay. Yeah. Tomorrow. Tomorrow's good. Okay, good. It's good. <laughs> no okay. kidding. You're not allowed to ever leave. Oh, uh, now this you're company. telling me what to do. <laughs> I'm your boss. Am I not? Sure. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Let's talk about this idea of transitioning from your own business um, as a nail technician, right? You've got your own um, station, you booth rent, you've got your own business, but you are looking to grow. Like, let's say you've maxed out, you're busy, you've got your clientele, now you're looking to the next stage, right, of I want to be a salon owner. How does somebody go about that without absolutely breaking the bank, which mm-hmm. I think that statement in itself is kind of interesting. I have my own thoughts on this, believe it or not, Tracy. Shocking. <laughs> but you've done it. Mm-hmm. So I'm very curious what are the keys in your opinion i know we're going to bring a lot of value in this episode to people that are really considering this because we're going to come from a hardcore business perspective right from somebody that has done it you've gone from uh being a nail technician in a salon to opening up your own salon yep you've been a business owner multiple times owner i've been a business owner for quite some time i have my own perspective but what are some of the keys? Like right now, somebody's fully booked, they want to open their salon, what do you do? Plan. <laughs> Break the bank, spend all kinds of money. Throw caution to the wind, just do yeah, it. Yeah, just do it. They didn't they're, hear that here. Well, you know what's crazy? To a certain degree, there is truth in what you're saying. Not, not break the bank and throw caution and all that stuff but to a certain degree you have to just pull the trigger yeah right yeah. You, like because you can talk yourself out of anything at a certain point you've got to just go right. you've got to just pull the trigger and execute you got to stop talking about it it's an idea and that's all it's ever going to be unless you actually just do it um but it's, it's, that's yeah there's planning but I've right. seen people plan themselves to death. Like, I need to have a five and a 10 year plan. My right, five right. year, 10 year plan is to be making money. Money, yeah. <laughs> that, that's, well, but what, I mean, I understand what they're doing, but they really, it's just like, are, are you gonna do it one of these days? Well, when you say plan, like, what does that mean? I, I know what that means, obviously, to me, but somebody on the other side of the camera right now is going, oh, okay, thanks, plan, plan what? Like, You're welcome, what? we're done. <laughs> <laughs> and see you next week on this talk. <laughs> like what specifically what what do you mean? You have to be realistic. It can it can get overwhelming and it can take over very quickly and you can start throwing a lot of money at things really quickly. <laughs> it's almost what might happen, but yes. Yeah. yeah it, so right. um what I'm talking about planning is not only like where are you going, uh, but what budget are you looking to spend? What what is your you know, how many people do you really want in your place? Um, yeah. What happens is they mm-hmm. start getting very excited and they stop thinking about, is this location the right location? Mm. Do I really want to spend this much money on um, this property? Yes, it's beautiful. It's on the river, whatever it is. Yeah. And they stop thinking, okay, but how many booths can I put in there? Right. How much are they, you know, this is the max amount I'll be able to get for booth rental or if they're going that way. Um, and they, they stop thinking about that. Like, is that property going to make you money? Right. Right. And how are you going to fill it? And, and that's another place that the, the things start just 
here, here's, here's more money, here's more money. And they start getting really carried away with like, it has to be this perfect, beautiful place and I have to right. spend all this money to do it. And you don't, you don't have to do that. So that's where the planning comes in. Yeah, that that's a excellent, excellent point. One of the exercises that we do here you know, whenever it comes to starting something new, and this is something I highly recommend, Tracy just touched on it, this part of planning, is going through the motion of seeing, like, what is your break-even point, right? You, you got to, like, okay, a business plan. I'm not saying hire an MBA and have them create a 20-page, you know, I doc on, no, 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 exactly. I'm not saying do that. When I say business plan, this is what I mean. Um, how much do you want to bring in annually? Yep. Okay, so I want to bring in a million dollars in revenue, yep. right? Let's just go through this exercise real quick. I want to bring in a million dollars. I want to have a salon that produces a million dollars. Okay, how many services right. is that? So, what does that look like? Right, so if we actually break that down, the math, one million bucks divided by Let's call it fifty dollars a service. Okay. Just for yeah. I mean, this is average. Uh, average. Let's just say fifty bucks a service. That's twenty thousand services you have to do. So let's divide that by three hundred and sixty-five days. That's fifty-four services a day. Mm -hmm. Consistently, you have to do. How many stations does that mean you need? So maybe it's like okay, well, maybe I want to do, you know, less than that. The real the real way of going about this is to understand, first of all, I think Tracy, you know, nailed this. Um, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, is like, depending on the location, what is your rent? Right. Like, this is really where you got to start. What is my rent going to be? Um, what are my expenses going to be monthly? Mm -hmm. And then how many services do I need to break even and that's really the place that you have to go. Well, and you're assuming too that they are getting the full amount for those services. Right. If they're booth renting, you're only getting rent. Rent. Correct. And this is only for, right. This is if act, right. you're paying, they're paying out of that. So now what are they, you know, right. you, you know let's say commission. they're commission. Maybe it's 60 40. Now you're, you cut down into that. Salon you're ownership right. is, is, is very unique. Yeah. And it can, it can uh, be, where you realize really quickly that you're not making any money. Right. So. And that's a similarity among all businesses, true. I would say. Yeah, true. No, but true. But I think. Seriously. With with this type of business, a salon business, it it, it, it seems it's it seems so cool. Like, yeah. Like, like when you do nails or you do hair, that's kind of like, I think, almost everybody's goal. Like they have this visual of their owning salon. their salon yeah. and everything. And um. I always called myself a glorified janitor is what I was, you know, it's like you get to find out when the, the toilet paper's out and all this different stuff. You yep. know, my goal, cause I did booth rent. I did make some money on the booth rent. I was able to make money, but I wanted a atmosphere that I had control of a place that I loved and, um, and my rent was for free. So I was your, what was for free? Because the the rentals the money that I got from all the girls for booth rent uh -huh. covered my my rent. Obviously. Oh oh so uh, I you know oh, I understand what you're so saying. So again, you have to you have to go in and you go. What is my goal? Right. You know, is it just to have a place that I have control of, um, that I'm getting my rent for free, and then I'm servicing my clients, and that's and you're really making money. That's, that's where, where I'm making, making my money. money. And that's how I was. That's what you know. I made a little bit of money off renting it out. Sure. Um, but my my goal was just to have control because i'm a little bit of a control freak yeah and to make the full amount off of my customers yeah it is um extremely important to understand what do you want because you can very easily romanticize this idea of you know owning your own salon like tracy was saying i think that's very easy to do the reality is you will be a janitor you're going to um, clean up around people. You're going to have to keep the space clean. It's like here, you know, at, at Young Nails, I'm, I solve problems every single day. That's the majority of my job here is literally putting out fires and solving problems all day long. Somebody asked me years ago, I remember this, never forget this conversation. They were like, what exactly do you do? You know, you're a CEO. And I'm like, 
I, I'm a problem don't you, solver. Don't you just sit in the office all day? Kick with my your feet, up. feet up. I do. I'd kicking. like barbecue chicken salad today, please, Tracy. Would you have it delivered? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, but let's but see how that works tomorrow. But, I would like serious. barbecue chicken salad. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, really, really though, it is. It's problem solving every right. single and flipping things day. That sometimes you're just like, are you serious? Yeah, right. And it's the same thing in salon, like, like, like people not getting along with each right. other. Just, just things you're like. Come you on, deal with. people. But that's that's part of it. That's part of business. And and this is the thing. Like, if you are going to make that jump, okay, you need to have that planning down. So you've got to understand, where do I want to be? What is my rent? What do I need to make monthly to cover rent plus expenses plus insurance? So on and so forth, all the way down the line, everything that you need to have yep. legally. Um, and then, And then it's really understanding that you are going to be working like crazy yep. as this next level business owner. Yep. Like it's you, you have to truly love the idea of just business and like figuring out how am I going to make my salon a huge success? Like that's what I love about what I do. I literally absolutely love the process and the challenge of growing this business as insanely hard and difficult as it is every single day. I love that challenge more. And going into being a salon owner, you need to understand that like, that's a huge thing. Um, you're about to step into a world that is going to be very difficult and it's, it's you got to love it. Full-time commitment. Full-time. I mean, imagine if you didn't come into work almost, I mean, there's days that you stay home and you work from home because you're Correct. doing the filming and all that stuff. I got but, my feet kicked up and I'm ordering barbecue chicken salad. <laughs> Your wife can get that for you. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I don't think so. Um, but it would be chaos. Yeah. It would, and it's the same thing with salon. I think we've talked about this before. I, even on my days off, I went into salon. I would yeah. sit there and do, the girls were like, why are you doing your bills down here? Like, or whatever I would do, yeah. I would do it there. I would come back into town. It could be midnight coming back into town. And the first place I stopped was salon. Salon. Yeah. I have to see what's going on. If, you know, I, I think I've talked about the time I showed up and there's a bra in the middle of the floor and it's just chaos. <laughs> I'm like, what are the... It was dirty. No. It was uh, no, seriously, no way, uh, no joke. Did you? I don't think I've heard this. You, you didn't have hear to tell me this story no. some other time. But. Yeah, it's, I showed up and there's a bra <laughs> in the middle of the floor. It's so obviously, amazing. It, and it was late, and I came home. I had to stay up and clean yeah. the whole salon late to like one in the morning and clean the salon. <laughs> but but so it'd be ready just, for business. Hold on, back up. You walk in the salon, and you see. Was there anybody there? No. Oh. No, it was like 11 o'clock at night. So there was a party. Yeah, they, well, I found out one of the employees liked to drink at work. So There was a party. There was a party. Yeah, there was a party. There was a party. Um, yeah, unexpected. Th- expect the unexpected things to come your right. way and that to be the norm. Yep. Um, how do you prepare financially to make that jump? I think people would be interested to know, like, um, how do I get my finances in order what would you recommend there? Like, what did you do to make that transition financially? You know, I, I had saved up for it. And, okay. and of course, I had a little help with credit cards. But, yep. you know, But I had a plan to pay those off. Like, this is the time that I give myself to... Pay to, them off. Pay them off. And, you know, uh, I think I gave myself like six months. But believe it, I didn't put much money into my salon. Fortunately, yeah. I have a very talented husband who, you know, did all the flooring. But we're very cheap the way we, I right. do things. Um, yeah. All my furniture, you know, a lot of it came from Ikea. Ikea has some amazing stuff. Yeah. I went to furniture uh, uh, warehouses or wholesale places. Get it on the cheap. Got my, yeah. my tables. My tables were actually too wide. I had to take it somewhere and have them cut and sh- uh, so they were more narrow. So they but, fit. But it all worked out financially yeah. at the price. So you can do things on a right. very, in a lot of these salons, that you see that are huge and massive and their decor, most of it's Ikea. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah, it, there's there's just good stuff you can find there. We, uh, why spend, remember, <clears throat> if you have it, it's probably gonna get ruined. 
we just did a remodel. We're in the process of remodeling uh, three buildings right now, okay? The majority, if not all of our furniture, I think, is from Ikea. Ikea. Now, um, you know, Tracy's done some customizing to some, but like the majority of it is Ikea. It's really nice. It's very um, affordable. Yep. And if like, it gets ruined, you can check it. You can just, you can check it and get something new. Yeah. Um, it's amazing what paint can do to a place. Completely, right? yeah. Like you said, floors, you can get flooring done pretty inexpensive. You know, you don't have to go with like solid oak, wood, real wood, and blah, 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 blah. You can do it on cheap. Laminate works amazing. Amazing, especially for the salon. Yeah. Right? That's what we have yep. here. It works amazing in salon. And all that stuff, you just don't need to... to. Now, some yeah. people want to go higher end, but I, I always like... Put those put a few of those detailed pieces in your salon that are will stay and they're not going to be touched or hit or anything like that. And then if you keep things pretty um, neutral. Yeah. Like my, right. my salon was very neutral. And then what I would do as every season... All the pillows got updated. Mm-hmm. All this stuff, uh, little little things. Everybody would think you you redid your salon, right. and it's just these things. I had my permanent stuff, and then just those little things would get changed out. Yeah, just the accents, and uh, it brings a little bit new color and life to yeah. the space without spending a lot of money. You really don't need to do that. The most important thing is really like um, I like you saved. You had a little support from credit cards, but I think the big thing is it is really smart to save up your money to make this jump in this investment, you know, and what it teaches you to do also, if you're going to have to save up to make this investment, that means you got to dial it in now before you make the jump into being a salon owner. You got to dial that in right now, save up money that is a really good sign. Like if you can actually do that in, in over a couple year period and save up enough money to make the investment, that's a good road to be on. You have to be realistic because when I opened my salon, all the girls in the salon that I was leaving had a change of ownership. So that's, it just wasn't very good. Yeah. And, and they all were like, open a salon, open a salon. Not one of them came right away. So I opened my salon. I was the only person in there. For, <laughs> like, two three months they all eventually came over but they did not make that jump so yeah that's very interesting you need to really plan as if you're the only person there i love that and we know in the business world like somebody can say something yep and it's not that they are lying at all but when it comes down to putting your money where your mouth is a lot of people will hesitate and pause and actually not take the action right away. That's such a great example. Even in deals we do, whether it be with, um, you know, larger distributors or customers or suppliers or whatever it is, not until, you know, I always say it's not until the order has been placed yep. and we have that commitment, it doesn't mean anything. Yep. You know what it I can, mean? It, not one of them. I was, That's I opened my insane. doors and I was the only person there. Like they all ended up coming, but it, uh, and it, it, especially in the salon world, people start having fears. All oh, my clients won't follow right. me. All my stuff is here. They, right. They're comf- they, They're not happy in their situation, but they're comfortable in the situation. Yeah, so, so dangerous, um, man. Yeah. Comfort is like the worst enemy yeah. period. So let's, let's, let's sort of like tie this up and put a bow on it. Like, you got a plan. Okay, you want to make the jump. You need to understand where you're going to be. What is your monthly expenses going to be? How much you need to do. You really need to go through this exercise. And this is like a mini business plan. How much you need to bring in to cover those expenses and make money. Um, and then on your side, obviously, you're going to be, are you going to be in the salon? Or are you just going to be managing? That's a question you should ask yourself too. You want to just build out more space? Or do you want to actually be working in your own salon as well? Um, and then how are you even going to get the money to make that jump? You need to absolutely save. That's a good test in my opinion of being able to like build up to it. It doesn't always mean you're going to be an exceptional business person, but it's a good thing to do is make the investment that way, rather than going into immediate debt. And then, um, I really love this, this point, Tracy of like, you don't have to drop 
you know, $20,000 on a remodel, go to IQ, go paint it yourself, build all the yeah. furniture yourself. If you have a friend that can help you with floors, find somebody, or if you can't, just put in some laminate, very inexpensive. You can decorate the place nice um, for very little money to get your business up and running. Yep. Agree? Agreed. She always agrees with me in the end. <laughs> with that, say thank you very much for joining us this week. And we will see you next week on The Biz Talk. Bye.